Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday Live. It is lovely to be back with you all. So my name is Ashley Hay. I'm a mixed media artist and I am excited to be here with you. So it's been a little while since I've been on the desk doing a bit of a demo. Um, and today we're going to be talking about colour mixing with PowerTex. So um, I've just got some warnings on my page, so I can't actually see my comments, but I will try and get rid of those so that I can actually see um, what I'm reading. Just hang on a second. No, I can't get rid of them. All right. <laughs> so let's go. So what I've got here on the art table is I've got a whole heap of different colours. David, maybe we could show the whole art table and uh, that way we can see. You can always pop me off to the side. Um, so here we have it, a whole myriad of colours. Now, I have got a whole lot more than this. And so um, we actually have um, a whole range of colours. You can, I'll bring my little box out here. And maybe if we can put it onto the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we, you can see me and we can see the art table. So there you go. I've got a whole lot of colour swatches here. And some of you would have seen um, on the uh, post that Marianne has actually done up an amazing chart. So I actually started to put together a chart and this was, this is all my bits. So what I've actually done so that I know what is what is I've written little labels on the back. So you can see here um, that says ivory and red. So these three here that you can see, uh, ivory and red, on those three and this is the blue and ivory I'm pretty sure yes okay so the fantastic thing with the PowerTex and is that you can actually intermix all your colors so um, you can intermix all your colours so you can see um, how they all go together. And so all I need to do is I'm going to put a few colours out and I'm going to show you how to get a whole rainbow of colours with the PowerTex. It's a question that I actually have quite often is can I mix the PowerTex colours together? Yes, you absolutely can. They are um, all uh, water-based and so you can mix all your Powtex colours together plus if you want to play more you can also then put other things into them like your pigments, like your um, liquid powers, like your bisters. There are so many possibilities and of course if you do have acrylic paints they will also work with your uh, Powtex colours. So I love having a range of colours in the Powtex Ultimate Medium because it gives me so much versatility. And because I can mix a whole range of colours with from the Powtex, I actually don't tend to use acrylics too much anymore. I actually use um, the whole range of things from the Powtex art supplies. So um, you can see I've got loads of other things. What I've done is I've put out the brightest of colours, but you can actually get um, <laughs> some of them are back to front and all over the place here, but never mind. But if you have a look at this, you can get some really interesting colours. So you can get some purples, you can get some um, like really lovely salmon-y type of colours that are just really, really gorgeous. So, hey, Carol, lovely to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning. And um, I'm just going to take, I might just take some red and I'll mix up some red and then we can have a look at the blue as well. Now, if you do love um, and want to, you love what I do live and you want to join me to do some other things, I have got a mixed media triptych workshop which is coming up in the studio actually on the 20th of August. But as well as that, I've got an online mixed media triptych workshop and it is actually excellent 
because I show you how to blend the colours and I actually do a tonal scale in that workshop where you learn how to um, blend those colours right through. Hey, Renee, lovely to see you on here. So Renee's just saying blue is her favourite colour. Of course, red is mine, so I'm going to start with the red and uh, then we will take a look at mixing things up a little bit. So when you are doing a tonal scale, you want to have your red and your ivory, or of course you could use white as well. And I'm just going to separate them. Probably I should do it a little bit further away. But that's okay, we'll go with that. And I'll just grab a little bit of the white and I can actually pop some of that there. Now, the more red that I have in it, the darker the colour is going to be, the more white, obviously, the lighter it's going to be. So at this end where we want it pretty much the same colour, we can just put a little bit of the red into that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> A little bit of the ivory into that red so that it actually lightens it down. Now what you do need to be aware of with the Powertex is that it does actually dry darker than it looks initially. So there you go, you can see that slight variation in colour and then by the time I get to this midpoint here, I want it to be around about a middle tone. So this one here is really nice. So that is just ivory and red. So that is more on the lighter side, as is this. So of course, with your red, your colors will tend to go pink, but once you have those colors, then you can actually, um, what was I gonna say? Then you can actually, um, add other colours like your vistas and things, lay it over the top so that you get really a beautiful finish. All right, now on this lighter end, you have to be really careful about adding too much red. So this is something that when people are beginning with colour mixing, they end up using heaps and heaps of white because they go, oh, I want to make it lighter, I want to make it lighter. But the trick is just to get a little bit of the colour um, and not use too much of that colour at the beginning. And so you can see there how, you know, it's on that lighter end. And if we take it there, you can see it's on that lighter end um, like this one. So then we can repeat that process and we can pop a little bit more uh, colour into there. I'm just going to take that off my brush a little bit and see if we can make a nice little colour swatch of this one. There we go. We've got our white here or our ivory. And then we want a little bit more red in here. Now, like I say, you can always make it um, darker, but it's hard to go backwards. So you're better to put in a little bit into the mix and then just add a little bit more as you want to. So I've added quite a bit more, so it's going to be much more than a step up, but that way you can actually see the real difference in the colours that we're getting there. So you can get some really, really um, pretty colours, especially once you start taking another colour into it as well. So that's more like this mix here. All right, and then we'll go one more step. Take a bit of this. Let's make this nice red swatch a little bit prettier here. And we'll take some more white over here. Now, of course, I can actually also, I don't have to pre-mix the colours before I put things down. But in the Mixed Media Triptych Workshop, that's essentially what I teach you. I teach you how to actually create a tonal scale 
and I show you step by step how I really get that to happen so that you can have control with your colour mixing and understand it a little bit. So if you do want to have a look at um, that triptych workshop, you'll find my online workshops on Ashley Hay Art Academy. So that's where you'll find those. And um, with the triptych, all my online workshops for August 2022 are currently 40% off. So um, you will be able to get those at a reduced rate. And also, if you're on my mailing list, I'm doing $25 off the product bundles as well. So hop in, take a look at those, um, find your favourite one and join me and create online and I'll come to you in your studio, in your home studio, and you can follow me there. All right, so there we have that. Now, where it starts to get really interesting is once you add another colour into the mix. So if we take a look here, this is actually ivory red and yellow. So it, you then get that sort of yellow tone as well into the mix of, of what you're doing. So let's take a little bit of yellow and have a play. But of course, the most the easiest place to start is with um, the mixes where you're only using one colour and white and get used to creating that colour gradation where you get that really lovely um, colour range into your artwork. All right, we'll just tidy this up so it looks nice here. What's everyone been doing since I've seen you last? What are you creating? Drop a comment in. Let me know what you're up to. I'd love to uh, know what you've been creating as well with Powertex this month. And, um, yeah, that would be fantastic. So next week we've got Natalie on from Bag End Studios. So she's actually going to be talking about that night on the 12th. Uh, there is an opening of an exhibition with Damien uh, McAleer, which is the first solo exhibition he has had. And he's an artist from Toowoomba. And it's also the first solo exhibition that has happened at uh, Bag End Galleries in um, your ring <laughs> I had a mental blank then. Okay, so here we go. So let's take a little bit of yellow into here too. Got some ivory on one of my colour swatches here, never mind. Now, if I had mixed enough, I could actually use, I'm just going to get this off because Otherwise, it'll dry there and um, that won't be very good. All right, so if I take a little bit of this, it's not that wet still, and a little bit of yellow, I don't know if you can see that, but now it's got a really beautiful flesh pink colour. So let's see if we mix a bit more, if you can see that a bit better. So I'll just take a bit of red into that. Oh. This is going to be a brighter flesh colour. So now it's pinky, but when we take that yellow ochre into that, it's going to go a more orangey. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Then, of course, the less um, I actually tint it with the white, the stronger the colour is going to be. So if I do the same as what I did from the white to the red between the yellow and the red, then we will also get that whole colour change uh, sort of between this. Let's see if I can kind of make it <laughs> run down into that a little bit. And then, of course, if I actually mix one of these colours, you can see that you can get that lovely orange happening. And so that is quite a lovely orange that is happening there. Then let's take some more of this red from here. 
bring some more yellow into there, make up a... I, when I'm colour mixing, I always like to make um, a really um, big puddle of colour because you're going to find that you use it anyway. You can see how if I had a big puddle of one colour, I could actually change it around, I could use it to fix our colours. Another little tip for you is that if you put water on a plastic plate and then you put some baking paper on that, um, actually put down like a chuck swipe over the top of the water and then put some baking paper on that, that will give you a wet palette which will keep your paints and your power techs um, wet a lot longer and they will dry out a lot less. So water down, a chucks wipe, and then some baking paper, and then that will keep those colours cooler and they will stay activated longer and they won't dry out as quickly. So there's a little tip for you. If you haven't tried that one, try it, and I'm sure you will love that. So you can see how I've got that beautiful range of colours there and you can imagine if I carefully mix them right down to that yellow that I'd get a similar range of colours as to what I've got here. So Renee's up in Calbarry at the moment. It is absolutely beautiful up there and um, the colours of the earth and today has started with colourful sunshine. How lovely. <laughs> it's been a bit wet and wild down here. And, uh, oh, someone's just asking me to, uh, can I make some purple? So, yes, I can definitely show you how to do a purplish colour. And it's not really a bright purple, um, but you can see here that I actually have got um, a purpley colour and there's another purpley colour here and another one here. So depending on how you mix these colours together, you will get um, the different the different colour tones and it will just be a case of playing around. So this one I have actually greyed off. I've greyed it off with some grey. Now, this is where if you do do a little exercise like this where I have actually done the colour swatches, then um, it is really good to make sure that you actually have written on the back of it what it actually is. Because if I hadn't written R plus B plus I plus um, grey, then I would have no idea what colours I had used to mix that. So it's a really nice um, way to actually um, remember what you've done. And sometimes I even do notes on the back of my big canvases. So if I'm playing and experimenting with processes, I'll actually write notes on the back as well. So those people who've been to my face-to-face -face workshops know that I do that. And I've, sometimes I do little thumbnails and all sorts of stuff on the back of my canvases. So that has got red, blue, ivory and grey. This one just has red, ivory and grey. And then, of course, if you think about mixing purple, you actually would usually mix red, blue, and then red and blue, and then the ivory will just lighten that colour up. So this one is red, blue, grey and ivory. So um, I'm sure I've got some in that box there where it's just blue and ivory. So let's have a play with that, seeing as I've got a special request. I'll move these ones out of the way over here and this is your ivory and blue so this range here is exactly what I've done here except going from blue uh, this is definitely not blue from ivory to blue instead of ivory to red so you can imagine that that would sort of slot in like that and then you'd have your two colors um, at either end here as well. So that's an easy one because that's just blue and ivory. These ones down the side, um, I think this is just yellow ochre and ivory. So again, you can see how, I'll just pop that up there, that one up there. And this one is yellow and red and yellow and red. So that's 
sort of in this color range here. So we'll leave those up there. Ivory, ivory, red and yellow. So that's these ones. All right, let's take a look at some purple. I'm going to move the blue out of the way so it's not in our way there. And let's pop. Look at that. That looks gorgeous. <laughs> the things that excite you, right? Mm, the things that excite me. <laughs> okay. So what we want now is we want a little bit of blue. So you can see how this can actually be a lot of fun. Renee's just saying with regards to the wet palette, that's a great idea, especially here with our, um, with our weather in Australia, our Powertex colours do tend to dry out quite fast when you're painting. So yeah, absolutely try out that wet palette. And even if you're working with something else, then it is good to do that. All right, where shall I go with this? Let's go up here. Pop a little bit of blue out. And I might pop a little bit more red out. I've messed myself up here because I've got those <laughs> colours happening already, but let's uh, pop some red over here. And we've got a little bit of ivory there. I might just put a little bit more ivory out as well so the sky is the limit in terms of the colors that you think with the power and it is absolutely wonderful to have a whole range of colours um, in the Powertex because then it makes it super convenient and you can really play with your colour mixing and then you can also play directly with your colours on a canvas. So a series of colours I really like to use on my canvases are blue, um, green and grey it does some really beautiful things you can scrape it around mix it together really play and of course you can do that with any of the colors and combinations of colors so have a play with your color mixing because it is so much fun all right so let's take some of this red pop it over here take the red off of there and I'm not going to use too much blue I'm just going to put a little bit of blue in there and you can see it's a very dark color it is actually very pretty if you could see that it is actually like my favorite burgundy red color I think you actually can see that I'll just see if I can hold it up to the camera look at that um, it is a really beautiful, rich colour happening there. So let's just do another bit of red and we'll put a bit more blue in this one. There we go. I think it's just about the same actually, but um, the good thing is now we can take a little bit of that light colour and we can just lighten that colour up. So you can see that's still quite red. So to get it a little bit more purpley, I can just add a little bit more blue. I can always add more, remember. So I'm better to add less and then add more later. So you can see it's not a purpley purple. Um, <laughs> purpley purple it is a purple but it's um, not a really bright purple it's because of the um, two different type like two different types of red and blue mixing together isn't giving us the vibrancy but it is a lovely color and I'm going to lighten that up as well for you so that you can actually see how it's looking so it's looking quite nice but if you want a really bright purple, you could actually use your Powertex with your liquid powers and you have a beautiful um, deep purple in the liquid power range or you could actually use an acrylic purple. Okay, so I'm just going to take, again, some more ivory into there. 
So you can see it's still quite ready. Take some more blue into there. Okay, now we're getting a purple. And I love it when you start to, like, you can play with your power text like that as well on your canvas. So, you know, there is just so much possibility once you start playing with your colours. So I can take it to the bluer end of the spectrum or I can leave it at the reddish end of the spectrum. So you can see that's almost like that one, except it's a little bit brighter than that one because I've actually greyed that off with the, um, with the uh, bluish grey. So make a nice swatch of that here clean up this mess that I've got here and make a bit more of a swatch here. Yes, it would be lovely up north at the moment in beautiful sunshiny weather. I know Nicole is also going away so she's going up to lovely coral bay so that will be beautiful and uh, I know Jan from Ginger's Wire Sculptures she's off to Morrowa today to go up to the art prize there and uh, I'm just staying local <laughs> So I'm actually going to the opening of the 9 by 5 exhibition tonight. I've got a couple of little uh, pieces in that. So you can see what I've just done here. So this is the colour I've just mixed. So I've just put some more um, uh, ivory into that. So you can see, and now you can see the colour range. So you've got a darker one here, which <laughs> I'm just putting that um, ivory into it, but it's sort of, more matching that colour there. This one here is more that mid-tone of that one there. Um, and then I can just spread this all around and make it into a nice purple. So in terms of your colours, so your blue and red is going to give you purple. So it's just going back to your primary colour mixing on your colour wheel and understanding that. So blue and red will give you purple. Blue and yellow will give you a green. Um, yellow and red will give you orange. So they're obviously your primary colours. You do also have warm and cool colours in that range. So generally as an artist, you would have two reds. You'd have a warm red and a cool red. You'd have a warm blue and a cool blue, a warm yellow and a cool yellow. So um, and then you that's where you can play with your colour mixing and get your brighter greens, your brighter purples, your brighter oranges. So with the Powtex range, we've only got... Uh, you know, we've got one red, one blue, one yellow. Um, but you can see you can mix a beautiful range of colours from the power text. Someone's just saying it also makes a difference if you put red to start and add blue or you start with blue and red to start. Yeah, so just play around with um, what works for you. And um, so I guess with which colour you start with, the reason it makes a difference is because generally the colour that you start with, if you start with red, you'll generally have a bigger puddle of red. If you start with blue, you'll generally have a bigger puddle of blue. So that time I started with red, so it was leaning towards the red side. And then once I actually started mixing more blue into it, then it sort of um, went towards that blue uh, blue colour. So if we did it the same way as what I did initially, where we go from the red and add a bit of blue, and then we go this side and we add a bit of red, then yes, you know, you get those differences. So I'm just going to lighten that one up so that you can see 
how that looks there as well. But that is a beautiful colour with um, with mostly blue as well. So, you know, you're just getting that deeper sort of purple, whereas when I use mostly red, which, of course, you do if you're putting a uh, oh, run out of blue here, um, you'll get more of that sort of burgundy colour that I love, that beautiful burgundy. So, yes, lots and lots of colour mixing fun to be had with Powertex. You can do it directly on your canvas or you can um, colour it up like this, but there are so many possibilities that is a lot of fun. So, of course, then you can get into your tertiary colours where you're adding... Um, you know, three colours together and you're playing around with that. But you can also uh, take your ivory or your black into these colour mixings, into these colour ranges. So keep it simple to start with. Start with a white and one colour. That's what I show you in the triptych and create a tonal scale. Then once you get good with that, create a tonal scale with your purples and your oranges and your greens and then play around with adding your white into that. So, of course, you can add white for tints and you can add black into it for your shades. If you want to mute it off a little bit more, I really love the effect of putting some of the bluish grey into it. We also have the terracotta, which is a beautiful colour. It comes up the most lovely salmon-y colours when you put the white with it. It is really, really gorgeous. And then when you play with the terracotta and the yellow ochre, that is really gorgeous as well. So this is a really interesting exercise to do. So if you've got nothing planned for this weekend and you have got a few Powtex colours, why not pull them out and have a play and really, really um, just have some fun with those? So I hope you've enjoyed that. And um, next week, like I say, we've got Natalie from Bag End Studio on with us. This week on Sunday, I've got a new thing happening um, every fortnight. I'm actually on the radio doing a show which is called The Yarn and that happens two to four. 4.30 every Sunday and that is Australian Western Standard Time but you can tune in from anywhere in the world because you actually listen online. So at the moment on the screen that is the um, address where you can actually listen to the yarn. Now this Sunday I actually have Carly Lecerf is an Australian artist. She is from Mount Barker. She is absolutely incredible and she is coming on the show. I'm going to have a yarn with her and we also have music legend, uh, country sort of ballad uh, singer Terry Bennett's coming on the show too. So it's going to be awesome because Carly paints West Australian landscape. She does the most incredible encaustic wax uh, work and she really mixes things up. She uses oil paint as well and she does um, Australian landscapes and Terry um, sings about the Kimberleys and Australian landscapes. So it's going to be a good show. That's happening this Sunday. But as well as that, if you've loved what you've seen today, then jump on, take advantage of the specials we've got on this month um, with our online workshops, 40% um, off is actually on the online workshop itself. If you are in Australia, you can also buy it with a product bundle. And that bundle, as I say, if you are on the mailing list, I'll be sending you a code where you can get 25% off um, on the product bundle uh, price. So that is really good value. Um, free, uh, with the uh, products to be able to do the course. So um, great way to go. Um, so, of course, if you want to learn more about Powertex, we have got the Powertex website where you can go. You can find a trainer near you if you want to have a face-to-face -face workshop now that we're all opened up again and we're getting into the studio. I've got quite a few workshops coming up myself in the studio. Um, but for those of you who aren't able to get here to WA, I am still also developing that online content for you. So that takes me to the fact that this 
week we have released a new YouTube video on the channel. So it is called What is Power Text? And you can actually jump on there and you will find all the different products uh, actually explained. Now, this is an explainer series that I have been doing where I've, I've just about taken everything now. I think the only ones I haven't talked about are the liquid powers and uh, I think the 3D sand. And so um, not many more to go. But the Pantex one is really good. It will give you a lot of basics. It shows you a little bit of colour mixing. So hop onto the YouTube channel, go and have a look at that. Check out all those explainer videos that will really help you understand how to use your products. Well, everyone, from me to you, I hope you have a wonderful creative weekend. I look forward to seeing you back here again this week. Don't forget in the Powertex Australia hub to post what you're doing so that we can see what you're up to creatively. And um, it's always wonderful to see what people are doing. So I should post some of my work in progress that I've been doing on some seascapes and some different landscapes for you. All right. Ciao, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.